Captain Benzine, to the front! How far back is the pack train right now? Two, three miles. You will take your battalion and diverge at a left oblique of about 45 degrees. You will sweep everything you see before you, pitch into anything you might come across. Hadn't we better keep the regiment together, General? If this camp is as big as they say, we're going to need every man we've got. You have your orders. General, I'm not clear about this. How much of an area do you want me to scout? You heard me, Captain! Sweep the area! Battalion left oblique! Send a man after Benteen with supplementary orders. Tell the captain that if he finds nothing, he is to go to the second line of bluffs. Also, he is to keep at least one mounted officer with a command of five or six men well in advance of the detachment. Move! Yes, sir. Scouts come across a fancy burial lodge. They say they won't go past it. You better talk to them. side and let the soldiers pass you in the charge. If any man of you is not brave, I will take away his weapons and make a woman of him. Tell Jesu, Ishtaha, Ohio Kotek, the Bershu. What did he say? He says that if you do the same thing to all your frightened soldiers, it's going to take a long time. There go you engines, General. Running like the devil. Go to Major Reno. Say the village is just above us and running away. He is to cross the river, move forward at as rapid a gait as he deems prudent. You'll be supported by the whole command. Yes, sir. I go gather those ponies. Go with Reno. Friend, today you and I go home by a road you do not know. And so my husband divided his regiment. Major Reno and his men were sent across the river. Captain Benteen led a reconnaissance to the southeast. Both failed him.
Nothing. Forced night march. Men and horses exhausted. Nothing! Oh, God, it's a waste of time. If there are Indians in this valley, they're there. Bugler, sound the charge. This is it, boys. All right. <laughs> Somewhere past the middle of the forenoon. Nobody was thinking of any battle coming. A few women were taking down their lodges, just getting ready for the move on down the valley that day.
Go to the other end of the village and strike there. Yeah. Yeah. Go, boys. All right, boys. We caught them napping. Yeah. Let's finish this business and return home to our station. gathered the old people and the women and the children. He cried to his warriors. He said, take courage. It is a good day to die. The blue coats attacked the Hunk Papa circle at the end of the village, a good two miles from our Cheyenne camp. In all camps, there was great excitement. Warriors kept going, going, going. I wanted to go too. Anger was our best weapon that day. Custer rode through the Civil War leading 11 charges. He rode through the plains and never called a retreat. He never asked a soldier to do anything he would not do himself. I think, what was it like for him at the end?
Ah, de Martini. Oh, there you go, there you go. Where is Custer? A three mile up. And the hostiles? They're about. The horse. The hostiles. The Indians. Oh, they wish cadaverling. Well, the mule train has fallen behind. If he wants me to hurry to him, how does he expect that I bring packs? Now, if I'm to be of any service to him, I think I had better wait for the packs.
One group of soldiers was trapped on top of a hill. But most warriors were downriver battling Hayetzi. Come back! orders to advance, sir. We have wounded. We will hold our position. Captain, permission to go to the sound of the firing, sir! Permission denied. This is the ground, all case, men! It is live or die! Big rifle pits, no!
The first steamer that returned from the Yellowstone had brought the letters from my husband. I was to join him for the 4th of July. We were going to celebrate the 100th birthday of the United States. recognized him, even though his hair was short and his face dirty. A Lakota warrior came to cut him. The Cheyenne women pleaded for Custer. They said he was a relative, the husband of Meotzi. So the warrior only took a fingertip. The women they punctured his ears with their sewing awls. They did this so that he would hear better. He had promised never again to make war on the Cheyennes. And we had promised his death if he did. He forgot his promise. He did not remember our words. In the next life, he should hear us better. My people traveled with Crazy Horse, first into the Bighorn Mountains, and then down into the Powder River country. We froze. We starved. The white men kept coming. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.